Hello and welcome back to this series that we have about the life of an entrepreneur. I'm with Yasser Sakrani, who is the CEO of Microfarm. He is also a specialist hospital pharmacist and a university lecturer. Today's episode is all about entrepreneurial mindset. So I'm going to start the episode talking a little bit about my mindset shift in terms of creating this brand, um, or initially it was just creating a podcast. So I didn't really think of it as a brand at the time. Um, I was literally thinking of it as episodes that are going out to the world where pharmacy students, um, pharmacists, and, you know, even my family and friends would be listening to my journey um, in terms of my professional life as well as my personal life. So for me, there, there was... There, there has been a massive shift that I am a business owner and that has taken me nearly three years to accept and say to myself that actually, yes, like it really feels real. Like earlier this year, so I said 2023, I, I promised everyone on the podcast that 2023 was going to be a massive year for Pharmacist Diaries. And I feel like I'm living up to that expectation now it's September. But in January, when I created my website, when I was on maternity leave and I had a little neonate in my arms, um, I felt like when I saw all the episodes that I had put onto the website and I was scrolling on there to see all those amazing faces of pharmacists that I've talked to. I was like, wow, I have created a brand. I've got an about me page. I've got a contact me page. I've got a a directory of episodes that people can kind of access. And when I visualized that on my website and I got that website up and running, that shift for me was like, oh my goodness, like I am an entrepreneur. I am a businesswoman, but I'm also a pharmacist and a podcaster and a mum and a university lecturer. And it just was, yeah, very real to me. So that that kind of mindset shift was really challenging. Maybe you would like to share something that you've experienced in this journey that would be really valuable for our listeners. Hey guys, before we get into this week's episode, I really want to remind you about the discount code that I have for thenakedpharmacy.com. As my listeners or viewers of the podcast, you'll receive a 20% discount using the code PD20. Both myself, my husband and my children are using the products and we're absolutely loving them. I really want to advocate for this brand because number one, it's owned and created by a pharmacist, Kevin Levers. He has over 35 years of experience working in the industry of natural medicines and has created his own company and provided us with so many different products to support our needs. For me personally, I absolutely love their gut health products, the magnesium for my sleep, and Safrasun Energy. Because as a mum of two very young children, working full-time and juggling the day-to-day life that I have, I really need that extra support to keep me energised and going throughout the day. I also wanted to let you know that if you're not sure where to start with your supplement regime, Kevin has a team of multiple pharmacists that you can either contact by phone, email or on social media to get some support on where to get started. Check out their website, thenakedpharmacy.com. Now let's get back to the episode. Absolutely. So when it comes to this entire journey, having that mindset shift from being a sort of content creator to actually providing value and providing products and becoming a business, that can be quite daunting. What can be daunting is just how expensive gear, products, website development can actually be. Um, So that's something that can be a big change. For someone that's being put off by this, like I say in previous episodes, start the content creation first. Start with what you have first. Don't invest in high quality camera gear yet don't invest in high quality microphones at the start start with what you can afford and start with the amount of time that you can actually invest and then you can work your way up to a position where you feel like you can actually invest more into the business one thing that i will highlight what it one thing i'll highlight to the audience is the fact that very risk averse and what that means is i didn't spend a couple thousand pounds on products before I started. I started with absolutely zero and I the money that the business generated is why I reinvested into the business. So you can start with 
nothing. That's not a problem at all. Having that shift to um, going from someone that provides free uh, education online or some form of free accessible content online to moving to a shift where you're a business owner, um, you have to think of quite a few things. You have to think about for me, it's about thinking about getting the best clinical educators on the program. So I have to have a product that provides exceptional value that people will feel like is worth investing their time. And quite often, a lot of the people that invested into a microphone product will say to me that they didn't think that um, they could get so much value um, from such a relatively affordable, accessible product. So providing value is extremely important and also considering um, considering getting the best people to do that job. And in order to have the best people do that job, you need to price your product at a point where this whole project is sustainable. So you will get to a point where you're at a crossroads where you think I've... Um, been providing this content online for three years. I'm investing so much time. I have a family. I have children. You will have those those thoughts where you think it actually makes more sense for me to dedicate more time to my full time work, even if though you've got something successful online. And that's why monetization of something where you're providing value is extremely important. People have a lot of doubt when it comes to that. But the reason why it's important is so it's sustainable. Um, so you can actually invest more time on it and reduce your hours um, at work possibly. So now I've it's come to the point where I can reduce my hours at work by one day. So I actually have that extra day to focus on the business. And all of that comes about when you consider valuing your time. Oh, I have so many points on that. So we're at two very different stages when it comes to the business. You're in a place where you have you've invested a lot of money into the business, but you're now you've you have been generating income for quite some time with your um, your membership program. I'm in a place where I am spending money out of my own pocket and a lot of it, um, and I don't have that return on investment yet. So people kind of go into kind of two different stages and this links back to mindset because you are constantly shifting and I, shifting in terms of your belief in your brand. And this is something that you're going to have loads of ups and downs. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to have problems that you need to solve. You're going to spend money on stuff and then realize I shouldn't have spent that money and I could have done it for free in another way. And I think part of the entrepreneurial journey is accepting that you've got to embrace challenge. You've got to um, see failure or problems or issues that you come across as an opportunity to learn and grow and change what you're doing to better yourself and better your brand. And that can be really, really hard. Like we've spent so much money on equipment like cameras, lighting, this microphone, um, laptop, and I'm still not at that point where I'm generating any income. But I have cut down to four days a week in my job. So I've spent one day a week on the podcast. And I genuinely believe that even though at this point in time, I'm not generating any income on that Monday, that that income will come. I believe in my brand enough and what I'm doing with the community and what I'm building will generate me income for my family and give me that revenue to then swap from, you know, four days a week down to three or potentially two days a week or go all in. However, I'm in a, uh, again, it's a mindset shift here if we're talking about it, is that I don't want to give up on my role as a pharmacist. I think there's also when you're in the podcast space with regards to pharmacy careers, um, you don't want to give up your job because actually working and keeping up with practice and what's happening within the pharmacy space is so valuable when it comes to what I talk about on the podcast. So I'm kind of navigating that journey at the moment um, and figuring out what that's going to look like. And I haven't announced it onto the podcast or on social media and it's just like, what? I'm going to say it, but I've quit my job. So um, I'm at this point where I 
I'm not earning money from this brand, but I'm being really courageous and bold and ballsy that I've quit my job and I'm going to transition towards increasing the amount of time that I spend on this brand. Um, and instead of being fully employed by an organization, I'm going to swap to more flexible locum working. So I'm still going to work as a pharmacist. I'm still going to enjoy education and training. So yes, I am still going to enjoy uh, my university life and teaching. I'm still going to practice as a pediatric pharmacist, but it's just going to look slightly different to the current role that I have at the moment. And that's really important to bring up. And it's taken me three years to get to that point. And in fact, I it was a real challenge. Like it took me many weeks to actually let my organization know that I was leaving the job. A, because I'm super attached to my role at the Evelina. Um, I love the palliative care team. I love my role at KCL and the, the educational side and, and constantly educating students and building the next generation of pharmacists. Like All of these things are really important to me. Um, but what I've realized is I can still do those things, but in a different format. And accepting that has obviously been quite hard. So for people who are starting on this journey, genuinely enjoy the process. And it is an enjoyable process. As long as you find something that you are super passionate about and something that you know provides value to the people that you're reaching out to and start small. And one of the tips that you kind of discussed was um, how to manage your time if you're starting out. So I would look at your diary and see where you can find pockets of time to create content as an example. So if, for example, Mondays and Wednesday evenings, you've got two to three hours on each day. So say you've got six hours a week that you know are free at the moment that you currently sit and watch TV and you're on Netflix kind of flicking through shows and you swap that to becoming a content creator, that what can you create in that six hours without feeling overwhelmed? So this might be that you create one reel per week. And we, 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 at this point, are creating multiple reels in a week, but we weren't at that position to begin with, right? We might have started off creating, our, personally, I was just creating the podcast. And when the podcast came out, I did no reels. I literally put an image onto my Instagram page to say, hey, guys, new episode is out. Click the link and you can, you know, um, tune in. I started off as audio only. I wasn't on video. Um, so that made life a lot easier. Um, and in the beginning, we started off using, um, you know, software that was free. We had, um, we used our phones or laptops in order to record podcast episodes. And we had free versions of apps that would allow us to have conversations with other pharmacists as a podcast episode. And even the editing software was free. But now we've gone into video, we've had to branch out and pay for different things. So Start small, um, start simple, and build as you go. Definitely. Yeah, I love that. So I guess that uh, sums up episode three of this series where we talk a lot about entrepreneurial mindset and the shifts that we've personally made, um, challenges that we've overcome, and how we're both persevering with our journey. So tune in to episode four, um, which will be coming out soon.